In Romans 8, as we've been kind of going through it, Paul has been giving us a lot of words of assurance, a lot of words to give certainty and clarity for those who maybe need it. Some of those assurances we've heard from the other pastors are that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, that we've been declared righteous by the highest king and the highest judge, that we've been given the Holy Spirit that dwells within us and testifies within our spirit that we are indeed children of God, that we belong to him. And then lastly, that there's a future glory to be had in Christ, that the sufferings of this present time will not be worth com comparing to. And in light of such glorious assurances, in verse 28, our text this morning, or this morning, evening, whatever, Romans reads this, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. And as we prepare our hearts to celebrate and worship Jesus this coming Sunday, to worship His resurrection, I think the main word Paul has for us, the main good he has for us is simply stated, that God will finish what He started. That for those who belong to Jesus, those who call God Father out of that secure place where there's no condemnation, that He will see us through to completion. That according to His good pleasure and purpose, He will work all things together toward this good, toward the freedom of glory that awaits us in and with and as we become like His Son. How can we be so confident that this is true? Paul gives us extra incentives and, and phrases here to help us know that. In verse 29 it said, For, there's that connecting word, For those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son in order that He might be the firstborn among many brothers. It's crazy that this follows the well-known 828 verse, that we know that God works all things together for, for good, for those who are called according to His purpose, and that for those whom He foreknew, He also predestined. And this is the point. What is the good in verse 28 that so much of us are aware of or hoping of? Because Paul's not being ambiguous. It's not just general, vague, ambiguous blessing. But the good that this text is pushing us to is that we would be conformed to the image of Christ. That God's foreknowledge, not he knows like some kind of decision we're going to make, but his for, as, some, as one commentator said, for loving of us, that he, when he saw us in our mother's womb, he saw us from afar with a personal, intimate, deep knowing and tender love for his people, that in love he predestined us, right, as Ephesians 1 says. And it's all towards this goal, this shared destiny, this shared end goal, this shared room and, and place in heaven, that for God's children, we would be predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ. And so I don't know what your season's like. I don't know what quarantine is doing in you internally, what kind of turmoil is maybe there. Maybe it's a great time of, of being able to rest. I don't know. But 828 is pushing us to see that all things that God is working together for good, that that good is to push you closer and closer to Jesus to make you more and more like Him. That's really what all trials and sufferings in this life is about. And he continues on in verse 30. That those whom He predestined, He also called. And those whom He called, He also justified. And those whom He justified, He also glorified. And just the only, I, I know I wish I could get into all those different theological words, but the main observation is that all these things are in the past tense, as if they already happened. It's like, Paul's writing and saying that God is so sure that this glory is to come, and this glory that we're waiting for, where we'll be just, we'll have resurrected bodies and we'll be fully united to Jesus, where there's no death, no decay. He's so sure that this day is going to come, he speaks as if it already has, because God is outside of time. It's crazy. It's as, it's as good as done. It's almost like it already occurred. That we belong to him, that we are his, and that we will be conformed to the image of his son. And how shall we respond to this? Verse 31 says, What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? So, Crossway family, I think the word for you is that God is for you. That in the midst of whatever crazy is happening, whatever is unresolved, whatever is hard that you wake up to, the things that keep you up at night, in this season specifically, 
God is working all things together toward this good, that He would draw you closer and closer to His Son, that you become more like Him as you await that day when we will be fully glorified. He speaks it as if it's so certain that it's already happened. And I pray that whatever circumstance you find yourself in, that your hearts wouldn't be troubled, that you believe in this word and know that God is for you and he's pushing you to this ultimate end. Have a good um, rest of the week. Be praying for you as a staff and love you.